Welcome to this presentation from the Downey Seventh-day Adventist Church. We are located in the greater Los Angeles area at 9820 Lakewood Boulevard in Downey, California. We would love to have you worship with us any Saturday you are in our area. This is Bible Heroes number five, Ruth, knowing your identity. Now, here's Pastor Kerry. Praise God. So, Linda, you're rich. <laughs> Very good. That was a great story, huh? I really like that one. Well, praise God, we're here today. Um, we're, we're continuing on our blockbuster sermon series. I hope you, you know, y'all you, um, paid good money for this, this ser sermon series. So, um, um, and so, and it's on the Bible heroes. And this week, we're talking about Ruth. Um, and the, the title is Knowing Your Identity. It truly is a, a beautiful story. Um, one is, we, we all come from all different backgrounds, different places. Um, some are, come from poorer places, some come from richer places, and Ruth, um, the story of Ruth tells us where we truly come from. But let us pray right now. Father, Lord, thank you so much for this, this good day, this good Sabbath. We pray, Father, that you guide us right now as we uh, continue to, um, to open your word, to, to learn about the characters in, in, the, in your Bible, Lord. Help us to learn from them. Help us to recognize what's truly important, what matters. Help us to live our lives that are, is based on, um, uh, on following you and not just following whatever is going on in the world today. Help us to be people of integrity, people of character, as we learn from these stories. And Lord, as we study the book of Ruth, help us to recognize who we truly are. While the world may say one thing about us, our enemy will say another thing about us, but you say something else and help us to believe you, Lord. So guide us now. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we start off with the story of Ruth and the first verses kind of give you the context of what's going on. It says, in the days when the judges ruled, there were a famine in the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah, together with his wife and his two sons, went to live for a while in a country of Moab. The man's name was Elimelech. El Sorry. My dog kept me awake last night. All right. Um, his wife's name was Naomi, and the names of the two sons was Malon and the Kilion. And they were Ephrat Ephratites from Bethlehem. Judah and they, from Bethlehem, Judah, and they went to Moab and lived there. Okay, so here's the story. There was a drought, like here. And they all went to Barstow, right? They all left. Because they realized there's no water here. There's no food here. And they, they, all, they all left. And so then we have the next part of the story. Now Elimelech and Naomi and hus Naomi's husband died. And she was left with their two sons. And they married a Moabite woman, one named Orpah and the other named Ruth. After they lived there about 10 years, both Malon and Kilion also died. And Naomi was left without her two sons and her husbands. So we learned two things. One, it's bad to be a, a man in this story. <laughs> you know, something, something's wrong here, right? So all the men are dying here. And then we have Naomi, um, who is this, um, uh, the mother, and who had these two sons who got married. And the, all the guys died. And so now we have three widows in the story. 
When we think of widows, we have our, our version of widows in our own mind. We think of someone who has lost a, a loved one, um, particularly like in a, a man, a, a man uh, um, who's lost their, their wives, a widower, right? But a, a, man who, a, a woman who's lost their, their husband is a widow. And, and we have this, you know, this idea, and, and some of us have lost loved ones and realize the tragedy and the hardship of going through this. Um, but we have safeguards in our culture today to where, like, if you lost your hus- husband, um, you know, there's, there's, there's financial backing to where you're not left alone. But in this day and age, a woman um, has really, they has no income on their own. They cannot work at this time period. And so the idea of a, a um, you know, this is a, a, a humongous, humongous tragedy that is happening. All three women have become widowed. There's no one to provide for them in this time, this day and age. And so we have this context of the story. But we're also, we see um, they all left Bethlehem and they, the, the two sons marry a Moabite. And we have a different, um, we have like, this, this, is, this changes a lot of things. It's one thing to have an Israelite who is a widow, but now we have someone who is a Moabite who is a widow. And we're, we're, we're looking at, this is a bad situation here. Where someone, not only is this people widows, but they are kind of considered outcasts from the community already. So Naomi, who's this um, wonderful lady who had um, their two sons and now has their two widows, had gave them a choice. Okay, some of you, are you Oprah or Ruth, here's the situation. We're all widows. We have no way to take care of ourselves. So you are free to go back where you come from. And Oprah, Oprah went and said, hey, I'm out of here. I have a show to run, right? <laughs> I have a network to take care of, the big O, right? I'm going to go back home. And it was her right to go back home. It, it, logic says, my family will go and take care of me, right? But Ruth was, had a, was, saw something different. She saw herself, she was adopted into this whole new belief system, understanding this, this and, and saw the God in this family's religion and realized this is who I am. This is what I aspire to be. And so we realize, or she sees herself in this sense. So let's move on. And then verse 11 says, but Naomi said, return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? I am going to have, I am going to have any more sons or more who could become your husbands. Um, so here's, here's the question again. He gives, she gives this choice. And here's Naomi's response. But, I mean, Ruth's response. Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people. Your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. My, may the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely. Even death separates you, even if death separates you and me. Something that makes me, um, reminds me of this story is, is when I gave, you know, I wasn't raised a Seventh-day Adventist Christian. And, um, and I'm, you know, I, I come, I felt like this orphan kid, even though I had mom and dad and everything. But I, I felt, you know, like really no real group I was a part of. I didn't feel like I belonged to anything. And then I came and, and I, um, I, I joined this church, the Seventh-day Adventist church, this, this, all these Christian people. And they were all very different. They were nice, right? 
And then in the world where I was at, you know, everybody cussed, everybody, you know, did you know, kind of gruff, macho things, right, or whatever. You know, everybody's partying, everybody's doing these things. But then there was this group of people that were very different than anybody I've ever seen, right? And they were nice to me. I remember one time they, they, they had, this is like my first couple of weeks in church. They invited, they had family night, gym night, right, gym night. And they're all, they invited me to go play basketball with them. I was playing basketball a lot, a lot that time. I was playing for two hours every single day. And, and they wanted me to go play basketball. And I'm, I'm going to, you know, and here I am. I'm, up, I'm there, and I, I got my, my, my ball, and I'm ready to play. And it's gym night. And there was Grandma Moses ready to play. <laughs> and there was little Charlotte, who was six years old, ready to play. And there was, right? You're getting the picture, right? There's a, it looked like, you know, Disney goofy series of, of characters playing basketball, right? And I'm like, I'm ready to go play basketball. It's gym night. I'm ready to go, you know, ready? I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do some damage here. And I'm doing it against Grandma Moses and little Charlotte, right? But there's different, right? And you know, I was like, I was wondering, like, this isn't really cool, <laughs> right? This isn't a cool scene, but I kind of like it. People are nice. There's no pretension. People are just there to, to enjoy each other, have fun, kind of like the parking lot party tonight. I hope all of you come. I hope all of you bring your fr- fa- family and friends. It's an opportunity to be in a place where people are nice, and different than every, everywhere else, right? Hopefully that's who we are as a church community, that we, we, are, we are different. And here's, here's Ruth, this is in this situation. It's like, there's something different about these people. This, they're, they're God, they're God, I believe is the true God, and we're, this is who I am. Even though I came from somewhere else, like all of us have, right? We talk about, like, you know, politics is like, you know, with immigration. But, you know, really, we're all immigrants in some sense, right? We're not just, and I'm not talking about just in the United States. And when we're talking about in the sense of we are all sinners, and we all come to know the Lord, and we're part of God's family now, right? Right? This is our identity. And this is what Ruth said. This is now my identity. I'm not going to go back. Even if times are tough, even when times are hard, you know, sometimes in the Christian journey, it's like, you wonder, man, this is hard being a Christian. Maybe it's not worth it. She said, no, I'm, I'm here. I'm here for the, for the long haul. I'm here even till death, right? So we see this wonderful characteristic of not really worrying so much about whether she's going to be taken care of or something. She's she's one, you know, worried she can take help take care of her mother-in-law. Another, she's she's realizes no matter what, this is who I am now. I am God's children, child right now. This is who you are. When you've given your life to God, you become a part of a new family, and this is who you are. And don't forget it, because someone's going to try to make you, remind you, hey, you were this person, and you're still this person, right? Make that declaration, right? That wherever you go, God, that's where I'm going to go. I'm going to stay with you even until death, right? So we see the, the hero in Ruth just right here. So we um, move on. Then now, but the, the reality sinks in. They are two widows living, and they have no way to feed themselves, to take care of themselves. But then there was uh, Boaz, who was this uh, rich ruler and owned all this land. Um, 
allowed no, uh, Ruth um, to, to glean from the, the harvest. And what gleaning is, is basically is they would have their harvest, and they were not, during the harvest, they were not allowed to cut the edges of, um, around the, um, the field. And whatever they, if they, whatever they pick up, whatever drops on the ground, they're not allowed to pick it up. And so they're just able to gather, um, um, they gather what they can, and whatever is left over, they allow the poor to come and pick up. And that's how the poor would take care of themselves, right? And so, and they, and so Boaz was, was not only allowing her to do this, later on you start to see, they were, she was like, he was telling them to leave some extra for her, right? really taking care of this person, Ruth. And it's her response. At this, she bowed down with her face to the ground. She asked him, why have I found such favor in, you, in your eyes that you notice me a foreigner? Again, here it sticks in class thing. Here's this Moabite. This widow, Moabite, someone that is foreign, that is um, different, an outcast, if you will. But we see the ruler, the, the, the owner of the land, still showing favor, caring for this person, providing for this person. Again, who are we in this story? We are all Ruth, right? We are all outcasts. We are all sinners. We all fall short of the glory of God. I don't care where you come from. You come from the poor. You come from, you know, someplace in Mexico. You come from someplace from, from Michigan. You come from someplace from um, um, South America. You know, wherever you are from, you might look at yourself and say, oh, man, I don't belong here. You know, you may, like, you're in Los Angeles, and you're at school, or you're at work, or you're, you know, you're, you, you, you're a different um, race than everybody around you, and you might think, man, I, I just don't belong here, right? I mean, who really belongs here in Los Angeles, right? We're all different. But, but the beauty is Christ has shown, God has shown favor to you. Do you believe that? Do you believe that God is showing favor to you? Amen. Is God blessing you in your life? Is God taking care of you? He's providing for you. Even though you didn't deserve it, even though you're just a foreigner or you're a sinner, God is still taking care of you. Amen? Amen. Right? That is the God who, who we serve. So we have this aspect of it. And then we move on to Ruth 2.15 through 16. It says, as she got up to glean, Boaz gave orders to his men, let her gather among the sheaves and don't reprimand her. Even pull out some stalks for her from the bundles and leave them for, for her to pick up and don't rebuke her. You know what this is? This is grace. This is grace, right? God is taking care of us way better than we deserve, right? Way better than we deserve. You know, I look at, you know, myself, and I look at what goes on in my mind, and, and I just, you know, and, and what I do, and I'm like, man, God, you have been good to me, way better than I deserve, right? Hopefully all of you can see that. And that is, this is, this is Boaz showing, showing grace to, mercy, to, 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 to um, Ruth here. Even though, she, you know, we have this way, uh, you know, for the poor, we're going to just take care of her, even a little more so. Make sure she's provided for. So then we, we go on to the story, and then it turns out that Boaz has um, had the... The structure of a, in fact, I just had this conversation with a lady um, who was about, no one you know here, but whose, whose husband is sick, right? And she had this real fear about being a widow, 
right? And her, her husband is, is, has a very good income. She doesn't work. And she has this really f- real fear of being a will. And we're wondering how she's going to provide for herself. I, I just had this conversation recently with someone. And you know, I, I mentioned, well, imagine yourself living in the Bible times. If you were a widow, there would be a, a kind of a, a structure of where you would go from this point on. You would go to maybe the, the next relative. If the guy had a brother, guess what? You're now his wife, right? Praise God, women, right? Are you excited about that? No, right? You don't like that, right? But that's the way it was, right? But so in this story, we have, we have Ruth, who's kind of in just like completely dependent on the situation, have no control of her situ- circumstance. She could have went back, but she, now she's chose to be here. And now there's rules in place. And it turns out that eventually, Boaz, the ruler, or the, the rich man, turns out he has a right to her. And she's excited about that because she, she's, she, she wants this right. So we, have, we move on to the story in Ruth 4, 13. They eventually get married. And so Boaz took Ruth and she, okay, close your eyes and ears. She became his wife when he made love to her and the Lord enabled her to conceive and she gave birth to a son. I'm sweating after that text. <laughs> I'm blushing after that text. <laughs> I need a glass of water. <laughs> All right. OK, we're good? All right. So here's this amer- amazing story, right? This is like, this is like a, a beautiful, just unbelievable redeeming story of a, a woman who, who um, lost her husband, who has nothing, but decides to stay with, even though she'd be considered a foreigner and have no way to, to, to earn for herself, and just at the mercy of, of this, this culture that's completely different to her, has nothing, and in the end, turns out the ruler, the rich person, her, they ends up, she ends up marrying this um, this. Um, this story. And then she has a son. So it's, 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 a, it's a rags to riches story. It's, it's, it's such a beautiful, beautiful love story here. But then we see something more to this. And for Ruth 4, 14 um, through 15. The woman said to Naomi, praise be to the Lord, who that this day has not left you without a guardian, redeemer. May he become famous through is- throughout Israel. He will renew your life and sustain you in your old age. For your daughter-in-law, who loves you and who is better to you than seven sons, has given him birth. One of the things Naomi showed in tremendous kindness to this foreigner, right? And that foreigner treated her better than her sons. That is something that I, I, I had to realize in when we become part of God's family, in a lot of ways, this becomes our real family. Certainly, the people in, like you could be related to people that are in God's family, but this is your true family, right? It means a lot to me because it, I'm the only Adventist Christian in my immediate family besides my new family, right? To realize that I have this place where it's part of, a part of, of um, this is my family. They've, they've adopted me. Hopefully you, you can be, feel adopted being in part of this, this family. And we got to work at being better family members to each other. Right? But that's what we are. We, we are all a part of this family. And Naomi here showed kindness to this foreigner. And God blessed her. It's 
for us. We need, to be, we need to show kindness no matter to whoever's around us. And you, won't, you, you will see how God will take care of us as we take care of others, right? But in this story, the woman said to, you, to you know me, praise be the Lord who this day has not left you without a guardian redeemer. Boaz is a redeemer. And what this true story, this story is, is truly how Christ is to us. Again, without Christ, we are nothing, right? We have nothing, right? We are just poor, defenseless widow, widows or widowers, sinners. But we have the father or the bridegroom, right? Who redeemed us, right? And then we, Ruth had the son, which is kind of an important part of the story as well. Then Naomi took the child in his, her arms and carried for him. The woman living there said Naomi was a son, and they named him Obed, and he was the father of Jesse and the father of David. Right? Hey. So they use this Moab girl. It's one of the only three. OK, OK, so eventually this child, this son, is like the great, great grandfather of David, right? So it's not, it's not just more than that God provides for us. God uses us, or we are being used by God for something so big. Here's this poor widow that God used. And because she was faithful, her son ultimately becomes the seed that leads to David, which also leads us to Jesus. Right? One of the three women that are in the genealogy of Jesus. Right? Just because she's willing to say that you are my God, I will go where you go. Even until death, I will go stay with you to the end. Doesn't matter where you come from, what your background is, what your mistakes have been, what your Races, what your genealogy is. It doesn't matter what, where you come from. If we are faithful and willing to stay with our God, he has something special planned for us. Let us pray. Father, Lord, thank you so much for this story. As we reflect on it, as we realize that we're all Ruth here. We are all foreigners, incapable of caring for ourselves, Lord. But you have sent your son to be our redeemer, that we are provided for, that you are always spreading your blessings all around us for us to pick up and partake of it. Thank you, Lord, for that even though we don't deserve it. And ultimately, Lord, you have this, you called us out. We're, we're more than just um, sinners. You called us out. Now we come to you and we are, we are a part of the priesthood, Lord. We are part of the heirs of you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for, for who you are and what you do for us. Help us to never, ever forget who we truly are. We pray these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.